COVID-19 is now the leading cause of line of duty deaths among law enforcement officers. Yeah, it is a sobering number and it prompted our investigative team to dig into some of these COVID policies within agencies all across the state. KSL investigator Daniela Rivera takes a look at just how those policies impact both police and the public. I have a hard time describing it. How do you put 28 years of life and love into words? Just because he is so amazing and wonderful and he treats me like a, the princess that I am. <laughs> Ricky Draper tries. He is so funny and so hilarious and happy all the time. Dustin Draper is her high school sweetheart and husband of 25 years. It's been an amazing ride. He's also a Salt Lake County Sheriff's deputy, and on September 30th, he was hospitalized with COVID-19. The last time Ricky heard him speak was moments before he was intubated. He just said, I just don't want to die. So that was the last words that I heard from him is, I don't want to die. After months of waiting, Ricky and Dustin had decided to get vaccinated, but they both got sick with COVID before their vaccine appointments. And had we gotten them before, sorry, I don't know if he would be where he is now. Dustin is facing a disease that's claimed the lives of too many like him. The Officers Down Memorial page, an organization tracking law enforcement deaths across the country, reports more than 500 line of duty deaths attributed to COVID-19, about five times the number of deaths caused by gunfire. It's a crazy and sobering stat. Even so, Brent Jex, president of Utah's Fraternal Order of Police, acknowledges resistance to COVID-19 vaccines in the profession. It is as complicated an issue in law enforcement than I think I've ever seen. The KSL Investigates team sent an anonymous survey to Utah law enforcement officers, and 340 of them took the opportunity to let us know how they feel. 64% said they're fully vaccinated. To the approximately one third who aren't, we asked why. Responses vary from had COVID-19 and should be immune to don't trust the COVID-19 vaccines and concerned about side effects. Jack says lack of trust in government and a divisive political undercurrent in the national vaccine discussion can't be ignored. By nature, he says law enforcement professionals are more likely to take a wait and see approach. Or when there's rapidly changing information, that's where, that's where cops traditionally will step back and go, well, we're going to let this, we're going to let this play out. I know, I know that there are officers who prefer not to get the vaccine, and I know plenty who, uh, who were excited to get the vaccine. West Jordan Police Sergeant Andrew Hercules chose to get the vaccine as soon as it was available. I remember having a little turmoil over it, but I, I was happy that I did it. I did. He do says it, increased um, calls in West Jordan, staffing shortages and COVID-19 infections among officers have put a strain on his department. It does hurt our shifts when uh, when we have an officer who, you know, gets COVID-19 and has to be out. KSL investigators also sent out a survey to 40 of the largest law enforcement agencies in Utah. 35 responded. Less than half of them have a mask policy in place. And only seven or 20% of them are tracking vaccinations through voluntary reporting. 80% listed their vaccination rate as unknown. There is not a blueprint. There's not a playbook. The Salt Lake City Police Department did track vaccinations early on. A study on its vaccination effort shows 70% of employees got a first dose in four days. And within weeks, COVID-19 infections plummeted. I think our officers have stepped up. Chief Mike Brown attributes the success to clear communication from department leadership throughout the pandemic. Answering those questions why, why this is important, why it's important to you and your family, to your coworkers. But like many other departments, Salt Lake City PD is not currently requiring officers to report their vaccination status. And we don't intend to. If departments don't know which of their officers are vaccinated, and a lot of them are not mandating masks, how does the department know that it doesn't have an asymptomatic, sick employee interacting with the public and then spreading this deadly virus? I don't know. Jack says no agency in Utah has a department-wide vaccine requirement. And survey responses show there's little support for one among officers. In fact, 
42% told us they'd quit in response to a vaccine mandate. The forced way has never been the, the, the good way. But of the 117 officers who told us they're not vaccinated, only two cited a medical exemption. Do you think it has gotten so political and so tense and emotional that there are folks making this very important health decision based on that noise and not whether it will protect them? Yes. I truly was just a little reluctant just because of all the things that you hear out there. Before they um, got COVID, Ricky you know, says it was wasn't Dustin who was, was hesitant it, to get vaccinated. Yeah, but he was ready for it. But him in true fashion said, you know, solidarity, I will wait for you. And I will always carry that guilt with me that I didn't trust him and didn't trust the science. Dustin's recovery has been slow, full of ups and downs. Taking it one day at a time, Ricky is leaning on the support of their law enforcement community, hoping for more days with Dustin back at her side. Just to protect your family, I would say it's time. It's time to, to get the vaccine, you know, and not be in the situation that we are today. We are wishing Dustin a complete and speedy recovery tonight. Utah law enforcement officers answered more than two dozen questions for us anonymously, some in their own words, sharing candid thoughts about vaccines and other health safety measures. We'll share the survey results on our website. That's KSLTV.com. Mike? Yeah, fascinating to see those numbers and the different perspectives there. All right, Danielle, thank you.